Welcome to the Writer at Work podcast. Ms. Catherine M.H. and Kit Boyer are your co-hosts. They will be bringing you updates on their journey to becoming full-time authors, as well as writing advice, book reviews, and information to help you on your road to authordom. Join these authors as they work on their writing careers. Ms. Catherine M.H. here with your co-host, Kit Boyer. Today, we're talking about how to write relationships, LGBT plus style. But first, it's been a while since we chatted. What's your goal for 2022? You know, I don't really think I have a specific goal. (laughs) Um, I submitted my chapbook to a couple more places. Um, I plan on self-publishing it if no one picks it up. Uh, And then I also want to refocus on this podcast. Uh, What's your 2022 goal? So since I got COVID over the holidays, yay me, (laughs) uh, my year has started off a bit differently than I had started planning in December. So I veered off and looked into how I wanted to focus my time and came up with uh, the word of the year challenge that I see a lot of people doing. It's kind of a cool idea. So my mine is the word hugh. It's a Danish word that's hard to translate as one word into the English language. So it's it's more of a way to be. I want to try to look at the year as a way of being relaxed and being happy and comfortable with what's going on around me and less stressed out. That's awesome. And that's spelled H-Y-G-G-E? Yep. Um, that's really cool. I've, I've heard of that concept before, and it's, it's always really interesting to learn about words in other languages that we don't have a direct translation for. Um, you know, that actually does remind me of Wu Wei, I think it's called, which is a concept in Taoism. Um, which is basically like go with the flow and don't let things stress you out. Don't try to go against nature, mm-hmm. against the flow of the river. Just go with the river and see where it takes you. So I do really like that concept. Um, all right. So it's it's February. Yeah. Love month. Can you believe it's already it's already February when you're when you're listening to this? Um, this February, we're going to be talking about relationships, LGBT plus and how to write them, how to include that kind of stuff in your in your stories if you don't already. And hey, I will be writing an article reviewing a couple of my very favorite, <laughs> all of my favorite films are my very favorite films, but my favorite films on the blog, so don't forget to check that out and sign up for our newsletter, which Kate will be uh, spearheading. It comes out twice a month and it has lots of good tips, tricks, recommendations, and whatnot. All right, so let's get us going with our first point. Okie pokey. Uh, first tip for writing fiction featuring GSM characters, I'll talk about what GSM means in a little bit, is to do your research. Explore all the letters and take it slow. Read a lot about the cultures and experiences of people in communities other than your own. Just because you're gay doesn't mean you fully understand what it's like to be trans, or maybe you do. Just because you're trans doesn't mean you know what it's like to be poly, or, again, maybe you do. There are so many letters, and they cover such a wide range of gender expressions, sexual and romantic orientations, bodies, and even cultures. Don't be afraid to get into the weeds here. A good way to get more info is to go to the library for books written by and about GSM people, or ask your writing friends, because some of them probably are different than you. Um, and sometimes a city will have, uh, like, an LGBT plus info type office that can help with, you know, questions you might have. They usually run support groups, pride, info groups, that kind of thing. Also, uh, make sure you're using the right terms for things, for people, for identities, for bodies, for lovemaking, for relationships, for surgeries, for your genre, for the cultures of the world you're making or writing about. Um, So GSM stands for Gender and Sexual Minorities, which is a shorter and more inclusive way of saying LGBTQQIAAP+. <laughs> it isn't like super widely used or accepted by the community or anything. Um, and I want to say in Canada, it might be used more by the mental health care providers than regular folk, but it's useful and it's very, uh, <laughs> it's very short. <laughs> so there are some yes. big categories for GSM if you're curious. Um, and obviously also it's the same thing as saying LGBT+. You've got your sexual orientations, which include gay, lesbian, bi, pan, ace, demi. 
You've got romantic orientations, which are the same, but they have more to do with who you might fall in love with rather than who you'd like to sleep with, if that's your thing and if you even differentiate. Then you've got gender identity and expression, so gender fluid, two spirit, agender, transgender, gender queer. Queer basically means nothing and also everything, <laughs> by the way, uh, and intersex. You've got romantic attachment styles too, like poly. Then you've also got some random catch-all terms like allies and questioning. The last thing I promise on this point that I have to say is that you need to make sure when you're doing your research and you're writing your characters, you consider intersectionality. So a person might be gay or trans, but they might also be Muslim or whatever religion you might have in your world, right? So don't just consider it from one perspective. You have to look at your character as a multifaceted being and think about how all of their various identities and cultures interact to create kind of who they are. Uh, so that's, that's the last thing I have on our first point. Kate? All right. Point number two. <laughs> people are still people, no matter who they are, no matter who they love, no matter where they come from. So every relationship and uh, couples in general will tell you that there are problems in their relationship. Maybe your boyfriend steals the covers and tosses them off the bed and then blames you for it when they wake up. Totally not calling out my man for that one <laughs> at all. But <laughs> there are still things that people argue about in all relationships. The little problems a straight couple would have are probably going to look very similar to that of a trans couple or a gay couple or a lesbian couple, or I think you're getting the point. So as a writer, you don't need to get over creative. Realistic is still sexy. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, and gay sex is still sex. Trans sex is still sex. If your story gets steamy, you don't need to be afraid of writing it because the bodies are bodies you don't have personal experience with. Um, don't forget to use your own lived experiences, whatever they may be, to kind of inform your story. If it happened to you, it could probably happen to a cis person or an ace or a whatever type of person you are not. Mm -hmm. So point three, there will be things that a straight couple doesn't have to think about that a gay couple might worry about. I can take my boyfriend home and not get kicked out of my family, but there are people who will be disowned if they take um, the same sex person home. I've had some friends that are like that. Some people might not have come out to close friends about their sexuality and suddenly they have a crush on someone. There could be the very Western idea that a man kissing a woman is cute, a woman kissing a woman is hot, but a guy kissing a guy in public is gross. So these strains will add conflict and personality and character to your story. So don't be afraid to also have them there because those are realistic things for this community. And a little more on that from the perspective of a gayish person. I'm myself solidly pan, but I settle down with a lovely gentleman. So it's kind of like my gayness is invisible. But you also don't need to go nutso on external gay or trans specific troubles if you don't want to. You can for sure just write a bright fairy story with a happily ever after. It's just up to you how you want to write and what you want to emphasize. Maybe varied identities are built into your world as normal. That's okay. That's great, actually. It can be exhausting to always feel, even in fantastical fiction, that who you are is a problem. Um, an example of this that I can think of right off the top of my head is a webtoon. And uh, don't worry, because later in the year, we're going to be doing an entire episode where we just fangirl about our favorite webtoons. But mm -hmm. um, this webtoon called Mage and Demon Queen features a gay relationship as the main focus uh, to women. And it's not weird in their world. They just the weirdness is that one of them is a demon queen and the other one is a human. Um, nice. And it also features a princess who uh, was born with a penis. And she just tells her dad one day, hey, I'm a princess. And he's like, yes, you are. And they move on. Like, that's it. You don't have to like, you don't have to go overboard. So our fourth point kind of goes along with this. Uh, you can just straight up replace your straightos. You don't need to break the mold. You can just write a cis-hetero relationship if that's what you're most familiar or comfortable with writing, and then switch up the identities of their participants. 
it doesn't have to get crazy. Yeah. Along with that, if you have a very large cast of characters, be honest with yourself about the dynamics of that group. Are they all straight? Now, depending on the type of genre, this could vary. Historical fiction will be one of those that will be a little bit more difficult to include a lot of things, just because of the fact that a lot of it would have been more um, hidden depending on the culture. So like, um, I'm trying to think. So like some Greeks, Greeks were pretty open about being gay. But then you look at some of the medieval times and that was a no go. So you have to really look at where you're writing historically for that one. But there is a book that I recently read, Hunting Prince Dracula by, oh God. Carrie Monascalco. Yes, that. So (laughs) I'm so sorry, author. Your book is amazing. And it's written in the late 1800s, and she incorporates a lesbian couple right into the story. And she does it in such a way that it seamlessly worked with the historical aspects that they do talk about how society will look down on them, how they have to stay hidden because of that. But it wasn't such like a blaring focus that it took you out of the story. It was a nice shock when you find out because that you're reading it in first person and it comes from her who's finding out that, oh, this couple is, you know, having a thing right now. And I just walked in on that. And it goes from that to being like, oh, people are just people. And like, they look at me badly for the job that I want to do, which is cutting people open, by the way. Um, So she just became very accepting and let it move on, which was cool because it didn't affect the story in a way that would have pulled anybody out. So do think of how you can include it, but also think of the genre that you're writing in, because that will help determine how to do those points. So you don't need to go overboard either. But if you're writing about today's time, think about how many people identify in different ways. For an example, my main cast for my space opera ooh, is about like 42 characters. <laughs> but in book one, which is set in 2023, I have one bi male, one gender fluid person, two pansexuals, one asexual, and 10 heterosexuals that I focus on in that book. I originally wrote them all out on a piece of paper and as straight characters. And when I went through and started learning my characters, I started to really see who they were. And I was able to incorporate that and genders and eventually races right on into the story without any complications for me. Uh, Pro tip, don't forget to go back and put in correct pronouns and names for the people whose identities you change. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Point five is super important. Uh, Write what you know. We know this. We're told this all the time. Um, And going along with that idea of writing what you know and what your experiences are, uh, make sure that you keep in mind own voices. You want authentic stories by real people about realistic people. So don't jump into a personal tale that isn't your own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's fine to have an ace character, main or side, regardless of your identity. You should write about all kinds of people and experiences. It's not fine, though, to write about how hard it is to be an ace, a personal memoir, a tale of rejection and redemption. If you're not ace and have no ace experience, picking up what I'm laying down, the person who gets to write about that is someone who can do it justice and it's someone who needs to write it. Um, Kate, I know you have an interesting story about this type of thing. Yes. So in Spain, they have this big book awards. And recently, I should say, uh, I guess I don't know if they have the book awards recently, but this happened recently, where a book who was written by a woman who had originally struggled, and then got herself um, into like college, was doing really well, and she wrote books for people. Um, And it had to do with her struggle and things like that. And her characters were like that. And many um, women followed this author because of that. And then it came out when the book won the award that the author was non-existent. (laughs) And it was three white men who were writing the book. 
and it really, really ticked off the audience. So be be realistic because you don't want to sit there and be like, look, I can write all this and I'm going to say it's all me. And then you don't even fit that. Like those three men <laughs> were not one woman who had struggled through some stuff. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm picking up what you're laying down. I think that story is pretty like funny, but like in a in a very frustrating way. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Okay, so that brings us to point six, I think. Yes. Uh, Everything is a spectrum. Um, By this, I mean that there are some candy floss flamboyant gay men out there in real life who are just trying to live their best. Their identities should not be erased or reduced in literature just because they fit a stereotype. You can go all out on your characters. One of them probably is an undercut sporting vest wearing hyper mask dyke. You don't have to be ashamed of that or hide it. But... Most people don't really use up all the stereotypes about their, quote, kind, end quote. Um, So you also shouldn't go all out all the time. It's like a bell curve, right? Most people fit in the middle, but there are lots of outliers. Just keep that in mind. Point seven, beta readers. Don't skip on the beta readers. Also, if you have a friend who you are cool with handing your book off to, because I know how that is, who is queer, ask them to look into it and make sure that it's solid, that you are representing people correctly. You can even ask the LGBTQ plus community to beta read if you are really worried about representing authentic characters. Feedback will be your friend and it will help you grow stronger characters if you're open-minded and we'll listen to people give you some criticism with that, or even even suggestions. It doesn't have to be criticism. But if you are asking that group for their feedback, make sure that you actually listen to it as well. Don't just sit there and be like, okay, cool, but these are my characters. If you want to represent, your beta readers are going to help you represent them correctly. Yeah, beta readers is one of our constant tips. Mm -hmm. Um, All right. I think that's it for our for our episode here. Uh, I'd like to thank you listeners for wanting to better your writing, be more inclusive, and expand your mind. You're awesome. Don't stop learning. Below, you'll find some links to resources we found really helpful. Uh, You can also, you know, do all the normal social media stuff for us if you want. Instagram, Patreon, Twitter. We've got a website. All that's linked below. Good luck out there and stay safe. Bye.